hell up out of Cleveland. I am making the accusation that it is intentional why that brother hasn't been found, because I know you watch the tapes, Dan, and you know that brother's been open, and there ain't no excuses for him not to get the ball more than we've seen him get the ball over these last few games. Okay. Uh, before we start, I just want to say Odell has played in 73% of his games since he joined the NFL, so he's essentially missed two full seasons due to injury. Tim, I'll start with you. Is Baker sabotaging Odell Beckham's career? I mean, those are some big accusations. And to say that, that their relationship, whatever's going on, and honestly, I, I have no idea, but to say that Baker is sabotaging someone, I mean, unless we have just really good information, I think that's hard to say. You know, it's not something that, that I would believe. I think, you know, Baker is someone that I think he desperately wants to win. And I think that about, you know, Odell as well. Both of them are competitive guys, and could their tempers and egos get in the way a little bit of, uh, of two guys that have always been very successful? Possibly, but it's hard for me to believe that, that Baker is deciding, hey, I'm going to go to somebody else that's not as good because I don't want this guy to – catch more passes that's that's hard to believe but I do think with the touchdowns a lot of people bring that up with with Baker and I guess now with, with Odell but this is a team when you get inside the 10 they're running it and they're running it in most of the time so I think you also got to understand the context of this offense is when you get into the red zone most of the time they're scoring but they're scoring with really really good running backs and a really good offensive line so I think that's a something that we got to also take into context but man those are some really big accusations against Baker and every time I've been around him he's been someone that's so competitive that he wants to win and I don't think he would let ego get in the way of winning um I respectfully disagree but I, I, I emphasize the word respectfully because I understand exactly where you're coming from let me explain exactly what I mean when I say what I said Baker Mayfield wants to win I'm not questioning that at all but in my years of covering sports, you do run across people, Tim, unfortunately, that want to win their way, not just win, period. And that's what I am saying. I'm not in any way implying that Baker Mayfield doesn't care about winning and you know what the hell with Odell Beckham Jr. I'm saying I'm watching a guy in Baker Mayfield that's completing nearly 67% of his passes. This Cleveland Browns team has taken a step forward with him as their quarterback. We have raved about his maturation. We have raved about his development. But somehow, some way, the lone question mark, or I shouldn't say the lone question mark, the most prevalent question mark about him is his relationship with, the Cle with, with Odell Beckham Jr. Keyshawn Johnson was talking about it this morning on his radio show. It was like, like wait a minute here. There's, he's open, and you're not even looking in his direction. You listen to people covering the Cleveland Browns along with information emanating out of their camp, Tim. And folks are talking about how Odell Beckham Jr. is in practice and ain't getting balls thrown to him nearly as much as he should. The kind of things that you don't usually hear about when you have an elite talent at the wideout spot on the same squad as a quarterback you're hearing with Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham Jr. And the question of that would be why. We know they got a big-time running game with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. We know when Jarvis Landry was there with Odell Beckham Jr., with Njoku and those boys, there were a lot of options to go to. But with Jarvis Landry having been out, with Odell Beckham Jr. back, healthy and ready to roll, and you're not finding him. And in a game where you score 42 points, you target this man three times. Excuse me. Something is very, very fishy about that. That is not right. Something's yeah. wrong with that. When you score 42 points and you got a weapon like Odell Beckham Jr. And literally you're targeted three times and you get two receptions for 20 yards. And then you heard the sound from Odell Beckham Jr. I want the ball. I want the ball. I'm not getting the ball. Everybody's allowed to say one plus one equals two. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah, Steven, I totally agree with the thought of you have Odell Beckham, who is a special talent. You want to be able to get that guy the ball, right? So, it, it, you know, let's just go to something that, that is more concrete. And that's what okay. I would say to Baker, right? What I would say to Baker is, hey, listen, if y'all do have some argument, if, if there is, if you're butting heads, Baker, when you get to the playoffs, and you probably will, you might be able to have even success in the playoffs. But to win a Super Bowl 
it will probably take a guy like Odell to be able to mm. make a few plays. And I think about the, the Kansas City Chiefs a couple years ago. If you don't have Tyreek, you're, you're probably going to be really good, but if you don't have Tyreek Hill against the 49ers in the Super Bowl, you probably don't win. Why? Because he's an elite game changer. The same way for the Browns. You'll probably yep. be successful. But if you don't have that dude that on a third and 10, on a fourth down in the red zone can somehow make a play because he is a physical freak, you probably won't win the Super Bowl. And ultimately, that's the goal. And so what I would say to Baker is, hey, man, I, I know you got swag. I know you got an ego. It's one of the things I like about him. I've liked since Oklahoma is that he had something that was that it factor about him. Hey, lower that for a minute. Boost up your teammate because ultimately it's going to be better for all of you, right? Mm -hmm. Go to him, whatever it takes. I don't care if you got to apologize. I don't care if you got to throw it to him when he's double covered. Get him involved because you're going to need him in December and January and maybe if it goes well in February. Humble yourself, dude, because ultimately yeah. when you do, everyone's going to be risen up. And that's what I would say to him is, hey, dude, you know, listen, yeah. if it's yeah. – it's, for the betterment of the team. But if mm -hmm. he does that and you can get the buy-in of, of Odell, I mean, this team has so much talent. I mean, maybe more than, than even the Bucks when you look at it from their, their defensive line, their receivers, their tight ends, their backs, all over the field. This is a great football team that has a chance of doing something really special, but it's not going to happen if two of your best players are butting heads. And so if, if I'm Baker, I say, hey, man, OBJ, you're our dude, right? I'm going to you this week. I'm going to get it to That's you. All. I want to be on That's the same page. Mm -hmm. I'm lifting you up. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.